first I want to make sure that I have the right um, audio levels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, ten. Uh -huh, I found the right mic. Should I put these on? No, or? you don't need them unless, okay. unless you'd rather. Yeah, um, that's fine. Get, most people are more comfortable without them. Yes. All right, just so I have it on the tape, your full name and your title, please. Uh, my name is Sherry Honkala, and I'm the vice presidential candidate of the Green Party. All right. Um, tell us a little bit then about your background. Um, I'm a formerly homeless mother. I have two children. Uh, I grew up in Minnesota, and uh, on one cold, snowy night, I found myself uh, having to make a difficult choice, which was to move into an abandoned uh, property owned by housing and development or freeze to death on the streets with my nine-year-old son at the time and uh, I decided to do that and uh, for the last 25 years I've been teaching families how to house themselves how to feed themselves um, but more importantly I've been a part of a process of developing leaders from the ranks of the poor. So why are you with the Green Party What's their platform and, and what is it that you connect with? I never really saw myself as getting involved with electoral politics. And then um, uh, about a year ago, uh, I was approached by some Greens in Philadelphia that said, you know, Sherry, would you run for sheriff? Uh, because we would like to take this foreclosure issue and bring it to the national arena. And so I decided to run for sheriff, and I ran on a, a zero uh, evictions platform, where if I became sheriff, I would refuse to throw families out of their homes. And uh, from there, uh, I decided that, uh, okay, I'm done with electoral politics. And then the next amazing thing happened to me, which is uh, I was approached by the Jill Stein campaign and was told that I was chosen uh, to be her running mate. And after examining the program, uh, talking to close uh, friends, as well as uh, m hundreds of mentors that I have across the country, I, I made a very important decision, the most important decision in my life, and that was to run for vice president. And recently, you and Jill Stein, the, the presidential nominee for the Green Party, were arrested at a civil disobedience activity at Fannie Mae. Why were you there and what were you trying to uh, get, get attention to? There's uh, almost 8 million families that have lost their homes to foreclosure. We've heard a lot of um, promises from the banks and from elected officials that they would take the uh, billions of dollars and that they would modify families' loans and they would figure out a way to keep families in their homes. Well, that hasn't happened. Uh, families that have been bailed out, it's like, uh, you know, one in a million who have been lucky to win the lottery. And so there's two very um, wonderful people, Rhonda Lancaster and F Miss Fran uh, in Philadelphia. Miss Fran had been in her home for like 25 years and Rhonda Lancaster 35 years. And right before... Uh, uh, there was the Baltimore National Convention of the Greens. Both of them watched as their stuff was packed up and loaded into trucks. And uh, uh, so uh, we knew that Fannie Mae had taken uh, their homes illegally and uh, that we had an opportunity to uh, go and demand that Fannie Mae uh, sit down, meet with these families about their homes. They had promised that they would. They didn't meet with the families, so we wanted them to make good on their promise. And uh, we went down to Fannie Mae and uh, decided to participate in nonviolent civil disobedience because we knew that um, we had a responsibility running for the highest political office in our country of raising uh, the issue of the foreclosure crisis um, because there's so many families that are being left out of the discussions right now as we're watching this presidential campaign unfold. 
We're speaking with Sherry Honkala. She's the vice presidential nominee for the Green Party ticket. Jill Stein is the presidential nominee. And uh, I'd like to ask you about ballot access. A lot of times it's difficult for parties besides the Democratic and Republican parties to get onto the ballot in certain states. Where will you be on the ballot and what types of, uh, how, how are you trying to get on the ballot in other places where you're not on already? Well, with wonderful listeners out there, uh, we're hoping uh, by the end of this week to be on the ballot in 45 states, which is huge, it's historical, and we're really looking forward to it happening. And that has only happened because people are tired and they have decided to go out and collect the necessary signatures that we've needed. We just went through a horrendous experience in Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania, they've challenged every uh, independent party that's tried to get on the ballot. Uh, Democrats have to get 2,000 signatures, Republicans 2,000 signatures, and the Greens 40,000 signatures. So if that isn't a statement about the undemocratic process, I don't know what is. So we had folks that were out there morning, noon, and night in weather that was like 103 degrees collecting signatures around the clock. And we did it. And uh, we actually made history in Pennsylvania because they decided not to challenge. Hopefully we'll live in a country someday where um, we won't be afraid of democracy and where we will change the laws and we will do like other folks do across the entire world, which is have seven, eight, twelve different political parties. I was talking to folks in Finland and uh, Green Party members that are uh, you know across the entire world and they can't believe that we still have a one-party system here. How do you respond to critics then who say, you know, with this two-party system, you'll be taking votes away from either President Barack Obama or, uh, or the Republican nominee, which we presume will be Mitt Romney. What's your response to that? I have a good friend of mine, Galen Tyler, and he always says, you know, how can you be a spoiler when it's already spoiled? And I think that that's the, the right way to respond to it, which is, um, you know, we deserve better in this country and we shouldn't have a situation where we're gonna vote our fear and instead we need to vote with courage. Um, we shouldn't decide, well, let's go with Obama because he's the last of two evils right now. Um, you know, certainly the families that have lost their homes to foreclosure Certainly the families that um, are unable to provide the necessary health care for their family members. Um, certainly uh, the family that um, was undocumented and watched their son uh, in Kansas die because he couldn't prove that he would have ongoing health care at 14. Um, you know, folks like this, um, and there's more of us uh, than there are uh, folks that are feeling like things are okay or that they can just get by. And um, we're going to go out there and vote with courage and decide that we're going to start this process. We're going to change what's happening in this country. Sometimes independent candidates only campaign in so-called safe states where, for example, New York or California where the Democrat is sure to be elected or Texas where the Republican is sure to be elected. That's where the independent candidates uh, try not to be spoilers, but you're in Florida, which is the largest swing state. Why is that? Well, I think that uh, if you want to talk about uh, the issues like foreclosure, <laughs> you can't not go to Florida. Uh, Flor Florida has uh, some of the highest foreclosure rates in the country. If you want to talk about hunger, go to Florida. If you want to talk about um, the, the growing prison population, go to Florida. If you want to talk about um, the state that has is known for the criminalization of the homeless and uh, the the treatment to the poorest of the poor, or if you want to talk about large numbers of homeless veterans, you have to go to Florida. And so we will go wherever we need to go to 
in order to talk about these issues that are not being talked about in the presidential campaigns. Finally, where can our listeners go to find more information about your campaign and about the, uh, the uh, Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign? People should go to uh, Jill Stein for President, or they should go to economichumanrights.org for the Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign. It's when you take a social movement and you take uh, a third party and you combine them together, can we really decide to make changes in this country? And that's what needs to be done. Thanks so much for speaking with me today. Thank you.